Welcome to GCSE Product Design, Design Influences, topic number 12, Health and Safety. Make sure you've got your class notes ready and fill in the gaps as we go. Okay, health and safety at work is all down to the Health and Safety at Work Act, okay, otherwise known as HASOR, the Health and Safety at Work Act. Uh, this is the uh, legal requirements that are in place for every workplace. One of the key things it states is that employers have a duty to ensure, so far as is reasonably practical, that employees and other visitors are protected at work. So, for example, it's the responsibility of the school to make sure that you're protected whilst you're here at school, as is reasonably practical. Uh, I could lock away everything that could possibly damage you but that would make DT quite a dull subject. If there are any injuries in the workplace then they need to be resorted, reported to the health and safety executive. Okay, the HSE. The main point of health and safety in terms of your exam would be f looking at risk assessment. A risk assessment is about identifying what could cause harm in the workplace and then detailing the steps required to stop that from actually happening. So for example if we looked in this workshop here what is there around here that would be uh, considered a hazard, something that could cause harm. So you may look at all the mess that's on the floor, that the tool is left exposed, all the safety equipment is left exposed to dust, there's some open wood glue there. There's all manner of hazards around this workshop which may actually cause harm to anybody that was actually working in there. Now when you do a risk assessment you need to be aware that risk is the chance that someone could be harmed by a particular hazard. This could be a high, medium or low risk. So for example the chances of getting dust in your eye whilst drilling a piece of wood is actually quite high. However, if you're wearing goggles, the chances of that actually happening become low. So the steps to carrying out a risk assessment, you must first identify the hazard. In other words, what could go wrong? Then evaluate the risk of that actually happening. Decide on a set of control measures to reduce that risk. Make sure all of this is recorded and then make sure that you set a time to review it just in case anything has changed since the last time you set this up. So let's try it now. If you were drilling a hole in plywood, what tools or equipment would you need? Hopefully you should have put pillar drill and drill bits. So what do you think are the possible hazards from drilling a piece, uh, hole in a piece of plywood? Well, the work could spin and it could damage your hand. Material could fly off and injure your eyes. The chuck key, if it was left in, could fly off and injure someone. And any loose items could become entangled, such as hair or clothing. So any of those four would have been fine. So, how do you prevent it? Well, to prevent number one, the person needs to be trained. They need to be shown how to hold the work firmly. and if applicable, consider using a clamp to hold the work down. Number two could be prevented by wearing goggles. Number three could be prevented by making sure that the guard is in place and being used. And number four could be prevented by instructing people to tie back long hair, and they should wear an apron and remove bracelets. And if any of that actually happens, then you need to turn off the drill using the emergency stop you should inform your teacher and seek first aid if it is required. So risk assessments are needed to help prevent accidents like these. Just watch these. You can see there his sleeves half hanging down. He hasn't even got any goggles on and that's a proper, this is a serious bit of kit. There it goes. And is very lucky that that piece of material flew off. He could have broken his arm quite easily. That. And if we look in this one, this is quite a nasty accident. So this is somebody welding inside here. Very very poor health and safety. 
gas is building up. And there you go. That's just killed him. All right, seems a bit graphic, but that is why we need to do risk assessments. So, things to consider from a design point of view. How many injuries could be avoided by actually changing the design of a product? And for that, I'm just going to show you this product here, which is a good example of one that's been redesigned to make it safer. So imagine this is the kind of saw that Mr. Gibson uses to cut your wood in his little preparation room. We designed this saw to be the safest table saw ever built. I think of it like seat belts or an airbag for table saws. The mechanism is very sophisticated, but the technology behind it is actually quite simple. The blade carries a small electrical charge. This charge is continuously monitored by a digital signal processor. When contact is made, the human body absorbs some of the charge, causing the voltage to drop. The drop in voltage triggers a quick release aluminum brake. A heavy duty spring forces the brake into the teeth of the spinning blade. The teeth dig into the aluminum, stopping the blade cold. The blade's momentum forces it to retract below the table, and the motor is automatically shut off. Okay, something else to consider is how, how products are recalled if there's a particular safety hazard that's been identified after it's been made. And there's uh, three examples here of products that have been recalled because of a safety hazard. First of these was the TX4 taxi cab way back in 2008. Uh, there was some instances of this taxi actually, actually catching fire. And once there'd been quite a number of these, uh, the company, quite rightly so, decided to recall the design and change things. A little bit later was the Pico fridges incident where a number of the, uh, the fridges the thermostat would fail and the fridge itself would actually catch fire. There was a very nasty fire in a, an apartment in London that uh, cost a few lives. And another product was the iPod Nano. Again, uh, there was instances of it overheating, not quite as serious as the as the fridge or the taxi cab. But uh, the key thing is, is that you need to be able to recall a product in case it asks you in the exam. So any of these would be would be suitable. In terms of the health and safety question, again, looking back, there's there's not really very many times when they've asked about health and safety. So I'm just reusing a previous one here where it's again it's going to get you to identify three features. Uh, the part B, two parts of it are there to do more with the scientific principles in terms of the component and the force that's acting upon it, if you think, you know, compression. And the last one here is, can you design a modification that makes it safer to use? Okay, so there's not really that many questions to choose from in terms of safety, but at least this one gives you a, a rough idea of how all that knowledge that I've just imparted to you just boils down to just a very simple single question. Okay, good luck with the question. Thanks for listening and don't forget to like and subscribe.